Hey everyone, I am back with Corey as always. Say hi, Corey. Hey, how's it going? And uh, with us again is special guest Amiga Bill. Say hi, Bill. What's up, guys? And we are going to jump right in and start playing um, King of, uh, what is this, <laughs> Knights of the Round by Capcom. Classic right, uh, right. Capcom hack and slash game. So let's just press start and dive in. I'll be Percival. All right. I'll be Arthur. Right. I got Lancelot. All right, cool. I like the sword. The sword's cool. It's a cool weapon. Yeah. It's nice and long. A, a really yeah. cool aspect to this game, too, is you level up based on how well you do in each level. And your entire character sprite updates and changes after certain um, sort of benchmarks once you reach certain level tiers. Your entire uh, character even... sprite changes. And it, yeah, you, the characters end up looking really badass. Uh, so yeah, there's just overall the artwork is fantastic in this game. Also, they added. I think someone was holding a button, so the uh, the ending of the level went in hyperspeed, which is good since we don't have a ton of time to get through the game. Hopefully, we'll make it all the way through before any of us have to leave. Um, but uh, oh yeah, there's uh, a couple of moves that's good to know about. If you press forward and attack at the same time, I think you'll do. A stronger move. I'm having trouble. Get, yep. And then also, if you press attack and the away back basically at the same time, you'll do a block. And if you successfully block, you'll also uh, be blinking and invulnerable for a second. So that's a. Uh, those are the two main uh, sort of extra elements to this gameplay above a general hack and slash. Also, I think Arthur and um, Lancelot, if you press up an attack at the same exact time, you'll do like a jump attack. I think Lancelot does a jump kick. There you go. And right. uh, I'm assuming Percival has something too, but I can't get anything out, so maybe he doesn't. I've never played as Percival before. Oh, rats. I just got killed. That's right. I think we have infinite continues. So I'm guessing uh, when the... Uh... Who is it? Percival? When he upgrades, he uh, gains a shirt uh, for his sprite. Is that what, what Quite, happens? I don't remember. I think so. <laughs> but he, he loses his hair, which is pretty cool. It's <laughs> <laughs> representation for bald people. Are you with me, Bill? I'm with you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, yes, obviously when he gets cooler and stronger and uh, more respectable, he becomes a uh, cue ball. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's I, I'm digging the um, I, the, it's hard. It's cool how the the, the 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 enemies have different attacks. Like I can feel like the weight of their weapon. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the uh, the artist did a great job. Uh, obviously, the programming is uh, very solid. It's very rare you see a blatant bug in an arcade game. So they really had their uh, quality controlled down back in the day. You know, yeah, those, the awesome. those machines were expensive and you couldn't just download an update, <laughs> you know what I mean? An update patch. Did this arcade game, like, did, they, did it have, like, a standard, like, Capcom, you know, motherboard inside of it and they just changed the ROMs? Or was it, does it have, like, its own separate board? That's a great question. I'll have to do some research. I know that they tended to stick with specific, it's like CPS1 and CPS2. Um, for the vast majority of their games. I don't know if there was anything specific about this hardware. Mm. I, I would imagine not, but I don't remember what hardware this specifically uh, was made for. I have a feeling that a lot of these games use the same hardware and the same overall engine, specifically this, uh, Knights of the Round, and probably Dynasty Warriors. They were all made in or, relative... Or Warriors of Fate. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yep, yeah. The Warriors of Fate. Yeah, it was also similar. in the collection. That, yeah, yeah, it's a very good game, too. It, yeah. it, it almost feels, too, like, due to the character sizes, that that King of Dragons... Oh, right. ...feels like it could have been a precursor to this. Maybe they built off of that engine, you know? Yeah. Uh, who knows? Um, yeah, they made so many games. They also did the uh, the actual official Dungeons & Dragons games, too, I think, right, Capcom? I think so. Uh, the, yeah, I think, I think Shadow over something, and uh, I can't remember the names. I actually own both of them, I think, on Steam, but um, 
It's been a while since I played them, but I'll double check that too and put a little info blurb while I'm editing the video. Uh, but uh, yeah, all extremely similar sort of engines and uh, you know, it would be interesting to see a chart of when each game was made and what the difference was on the hardware. There, so yeah, you just saw cool. Percival just um, Percival just uh, up uh, leveled up. Right. Is but, level up based on your gameplay, or is yeah. it also based on like what you collect? Because I know I'm collecting some yes. like season drops. Points in general. So anything you do to earn points, collecting stuff, killing uh, enemies, uh, all of that is going to contribute to how quickly you level up. Well, that's nice. It's not just uh, meaningless points, I guess. You yeah, know? exactly. Yep. This red guy is tricky. I like the background action that's happening back there. That's cool. And we yeah. just passed it, but there, there was some kind of background action happening there. Yeah, if you look carefully, uh, it's very low detail, but there's actually silhouettes of people on horseback, like other knights and uh, uh, in battle in the background in those uh, dust clouds, basically. Um, yeah, that, that's uh, Corey and I are definitely going to do a forensic pixology on this game. Uh, it's got some really great work on not only the, the characters, but the environment as well. Yeah. So it's definitely worth a discussion and some analysis. On, uh, How many colors do you think they're working with here? Uh, a lot to, in general. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure you're talking about at least four or more separate 16 color palettes. I think more. Uh, that can be used for the tiles in the background, but I won't know for sure unless until I find out exactly which uh, arcade hardware it's using. Mm. But it's a lot. You've got several 16 color palettes for the backgrounds and several for the sprites. So, now, would a game like this, like what, what, uh, what would the CPU, like, would the processor be? Uh, I'm pretty sure something very similar or related to the 68,000, but that's a that's a guess. I mean, that's. Mm. Uh, uh, you know, maybe something faster. Uh, certainly, it had way more uh, graphics hardware behind it than classic, uh, the classic computers and the, even the consoles uh, back when these games were new. Uh, assuming this game didn't come out uh, before, like the Neo Geo or something, which is even more powerful. Right. I'm not doing. Work. Oh, you can double tap uh, forward to do to run, and then you could do basically a dash attack. That's very Kind of like Metro too. Siege, you the dash attack. Yes, exactly. Yes, yeah, so I should mention to people, if this is our, the first video of ours that you're watching, uh, Corey and I uh, make retro pixel art games, and uh, one of the two major pro uh, products we're working on right now, or games we're working on right now, is a uh, classic two-player console-style uh, beat-em-up game, highly influenced by Streets of Rage 2 and Final Fight. I'll put some uh, footage up while I'm talking about it when I'm editing uh, this video. Thanks for thanks for the, reminding me to uh, plug our project there. <laughs> I don't, I'm an advertising guy. Well, if we keep going on about how awesome it is to be bald, we're going to lose our uh, Hair Club for Men sponsorship. Right. <laughs> I've got to be more Hello. mindful of that stuff. Lancelot's got quite a nice mane in this yeah. game, though. Yeah. Yes, he does. Beautiful background work by these artists that... Uh, nice and colorful and textured, but always nice and subordinated to the uh, character sprites, enemies, uh, pickup items. Uh, very very nice balance. Yeah, it's, it's not it doesn't interfere with the foreground action at, at all. all. Yep, exactly. I like too how they took otherwise you know fairly generic medieval setting and still made it really beautiful. I mean, yeah. it, there's nothing there's nothing overly done here, but it feels like it, you know they balanced the color yeah. very well and just gave it yeah. just enough variety. Yeah. To, to mix it up along the way, you know, it never gets mundane or anything. Yeah, absolutely. Oops, I have to continue. There we go. Those guys with the big swords, you gotta get them quick. Because yeah. when the state, if they they're start dangerous. their swing, you're in trouble. Yeah. There is that block thing, but you gotta get used to pulling it off. It's 
back and uh, attack at the same exact time. And you can't just stand there blocking a long time. If you do, you'll uh, drop your guard and have kind of a, a penalty. See, you're, you've got better armor now. Uh, oh, yeah. Or, uh, oh, that's Bill. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Bill with the lux luxurious golden locks. Yes. Right. I'm, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying uh, <laughs> having some hair for the, for the time being. There you go. That's... You're trying to salvage our uh, Hair Club for Men sponsorship. Yep. I guess that's, really good I've never seen that uh, in another beat em up like like old school 16 bit where the characters yeah. actually change like that you know that's, yeah it's really cool it's pretty nice and beautifully done like it, it would you'd be hard pressed to find someone that doesn't think yeah the character just looks a lot more badass now you know what I mean right. like they needed yeah. quite a bit of variety but they needed to make sure your character starts out looking cool and ends up looking really cool. Uh, I mentioned this before to Corey Man, or we discussed this briefly before. I love that back staircase and that wall. Yeah. It's got so much character. It's a mundane thing, but it's so beautifully done to make it uh, interesting without di without it being distracting. Like if you look at it, it's really nice, but it's not screaming at you to look at it. It's also uh, it because it's a three dimensional uh, a three dimensional vibe as well. Yeah, absolutely. Very true. It reminds me, it's got some um, Defender of the Crown vibes. Yep. That, uh, good point, yep. Jim Sachs. Moonwalking <laughs> walking horse. Yep. <laughs> he just, the horse just wanted to uh, see if Annie was okay. But um, <laughs> but um, Tish. You could do a lot of damage uh, if you don't suck like I'm uh, doing right now. You can do a lot of damage on the uh, while you're on the horse. Like each slash does more damage. It's called the horse bonus, I think. <laughs> right. You know there are so many games where I don't enjoy getting on horses. Yeah. You know, but yeah. this is one where they. It, it's pretty easy to get on and get off, and they handle it pretty well. I, it's yeah. a rare exception, I guess. Yeah. It's the uh, jump button to turn around on the horse, correct? Yeah, yeah. It's okay. very simple to use. Did that enemy come come with us at the end there? It looked like uh, he did. Uh, I wasn't paying enough attention, so uh, well, rewind that footage later on yeah. and see. Ooh, a nice. Yeah, you gotta get these guys with the swords. Oh, there's a oh, wow. lions or tigers. Lions, telling me. <laughs> Big cats. <laughs> yes. Oh no, I'm dead, guys. Let's see. Can I come back? Yeah, yeah. Keep rejoining. There you go. Okay. Have either of you guys had the privilege of seeing a liger in person? A liger. No. Liger. Uh, a uh, uh, half lion, half tiger. No. They are absolutely monstrously huge, but they They're are... They're a real thing. Yeah, oh yeah. They're very rare. They're pretty much only ever uh, bred in captivity, either accidentally or through <laughs> some kind of perhaps cruelty. But it, it is uh, it creates a freak of nature giant cat that is drastically bigger than either a lion or tiger. But uh, they tend to have biological issues specifically. I think they... Um, can't reproduce. I'm gonna fact check myself uh, for the video when I edit, but um, yeah, uh, it was uh, quite the thing to behold. Oh, can I continue? That's wild. Yeah. I've got a. I drive a Volkswagen Tiguan, which is named after a tiger and, a, and an iguana. <laughs> that I don't think really exists, but I mean the car no. does, I'm sure, but not the car definitely not the exists. animal. Yeah. How many, how, many really different, cool. how many different upgrades did they go through when they level up? Is it multiple? or? There's the numeric upgrades, which are much more plentiful. The visual upgrades, I think there's only about four. We'll see. Um, or maybe I just, yeah, maybe I just never reached the highest one. I'm trying to attack my partner here. Oops. Um, but yeah, there, there's, there's at least four, I'm, I'm almost certain. When this guy uh, jumps, you have to jump when he lands, or you'll get kind of stunned or knocked down by his cloud if you're ah. relatively close to him. Oops. 
Oh, I see the cloud. Got it. Yeah. I jumped while he was in the air, but you gotta jump yeah. when he lands. Yeah, exactly. That's a cool. That's a cool mechanic. I like that. Yeah, there's a yeah. This game has a lot of uh, a lot of really good stuff going for it. It was definitely designed to be a massive quarter eater, though. Token eater. <laughs> oh it's, yeah. It's very hard. Yeah, like I'm sure there's plenty of let's plays or long plays out there with people that have played this game a ton and can get through the whole game without getting hit. I think I'm There's averaging. Yeah, I think I'm averaging dying about once every 20 seconds. <laughs> but uh, yeah, haven't played in a while uh, in any real sense to practice and get good at it in a long time. And uh, it's accurate to the legend in that there were clearly only three nights of the round. Yes, that, um... of course. <laughs> It's, tr it's tricky fighting the boss with all the ads. See if any of us change appearance. Oh, some sampled voices. Right. Yeah, there we go. You're golden oh, now, uh, Corey, or King yeah. Arthur, I should say. How many stages are there? We're on stage four already. A lot. Uh, I think in general this game takes uh, a little over forty minutes to beat. Hopefully, uh, us. Uh, Skipping the uh, cinematic scenes or fast forwarding them by holding attack will uh, allow us to finish uh, in time where, so you don't have to leave before the end of the game, Bill. You have to put my Halloween costume on. Oh. <laughs> Scare the kids away. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't this have like a save feature or something? Uh, just curious about that. I can't remember. Uh, not that <laughs> I know. Oh, you mean the Capcom bundle? Which, by the way, yeah. everyone, just uh, we're not sponsored by them, but this bundle is excellent. A lot of great games. The online multiplayer is just amazing how well it works. I'm in France. Uh, Corey and uh, Bill are in different parts of America. And as you can see, hopefully, by the video, it's uh, playing flawlessly. I don't think anyone's noticing any kind of lag. Uh, no, we've got to perfect. remember to uh, to hold attack to skip uh, those scenes as much as possible between levels. Oh, right. I said that, not that, you know, I didn't remember either, but... Let's see. I like the variety of enemies, it's cool. Yeah, and, and they're very nicely, very nicely designed, very nicely colored. Uh, extremely tasteful. Uh, I would say the only game that I think visually might be even better uh, of, out of this sort of group of games is, um, what is it again? Is it Warriors of Fate, Corey? The, yeah, uh, Warriors yeah, of Fate. Yeah, that is absolutely beautiful, too. I noticed the horses in Warriors of Fate behave almost exactly the same, so yeah. that does speak to it being the same, same engine. engine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a cool attack move that enemy has. Yeah. I love the water in the background and the, and the thunder and the lightning. Yeah, adding some really nice sort of cinematic drama to it. The jump can get you out of trouble. Yeah, that's for sure. Luckily, we can't hit each other. Then we'd be dying every five <laughs> seconds. Exactly. I, there were, I'm not going to lie. There were a couple times at the beginning where I was attacking one of you guys. Yeah, I was it. doing that too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because, because when you guys up, you know, level up, like your character yeah, changes appearance a little exactly, bit. Exactly, yeah. Thank you. There we go. All right, let's fast forward. One of these buttons does it. Come on. There we go. Yeah, it's the X button, which is attack. Yeah, the artwork is really great. Yeah.
Oh, another cool thing they do in this game, I'm pretty sure. When you open up a big thing, like there's a treasure or even one of the big health replenish, like turkey dinners or whatever, if you slash it, it breaks into a bunch of smaller ones, allowing you to share it with your uh, co-players better. Cool. A very clever little, uh, those little attentions to detail, adding some sophistication, more uh, complexity to the gameplay is really cool. Yeah. Now, did you say there's a way you can turn around on the horse? Because I was yeah, facing right. Yeah, you press right. the jump button. Oh, okay. I need to remember that for next time. Yeah. I was trying to turn around. I couldn't. That makes sense. That's a good... Yeah. Makes sense. Well, you know, you would you would think maybe your horse would jump in that case, but no. <laughs> but I think if you double tap forward like the like uh, to run, ironically, then your horse does a hop. And the hop, like when you land, it stuns enemies that are close to you. I think that's in this game. Unless oh, I'm man, mistaking that, it for another game. That coastline back there is just beautifully done. It's yeah. so good. Um, yeah. The ripple in the water. Oh, I like the, the screen shake there. That was cool. Yeah. Oh, that's always a, uh, a great thing to add to your game if you can, to really emphasize the, the sort of camera shake to emphasize uh, big impacts, explosions, things like that. Um, it can get a little carried away in uh, multiplayer games if you use it all the time, but uh, um, there we go, turn around. Yeah, the jump definitely turns you around. Yep. It takes a second though, you don't turn yep. around immediately, which is good. Yeah, and if you're, um, I think if you're pressing the other buttons or directions at the same time, it might do something different. Like, I think I've noticed that before, like, I tried to turn around, I pressed jump and nothing happened, and it's because I was doing something else at the same time. Yep, it's, yep, so double tap forward when you're on the horse, and he'll basically stomp, which stuns, stuns the enemies in proximity to the, where you land. So, uh, yeah, I uh, should say... Yep, go ahead. Sorry. Interesting to see those bird enemies. Uh, yeah. Not, that's not usual for these types yeah. of games, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Reminds me of uh, the other game we're working on right now, Damon <laughs> I was going to say that. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say that. <laughs> and the uh, be do it. beautiful uh, falcons in the first level, and um, somebody hasn't joined back in yet. There you go. Um, and the owls in level two also look uh, really beautiful. So I'll put up some footage of that while we're talking about it too, when I edit the video. Boss. Oh. oh wow. Yeah, he just grabbed me right off of that horse. He's tough. I guess it's hammer time. <laughs> but um tish. <clears throat> the uh, the old giant skull face in the chest reminds me of one of my favorite classic uh, Japanese cartoons, uh, which was called Guy King. And uh, oh, yeah. one of the robots that the uh, different um, heroes could form was the robot called Guy King. That the head, the skeletal head of a giant flying fortress dragon, the head would come off. And it would basically transform, and it would be this cool robot with giant horns on its little robot head. And then the uh, the head of the dragon was the the fa the face of the dragon was the uh, uh, was the chest of the robot. <laughs> but it looked really cool. And they make new action figures of that old robot with like keeping the old design, but with modern design sensibilities. Just making it, you know, changing the proportions and angles and details just a tiny bit. Uh, it'll look so cool. I'll put a little image of that up on the screen for people to see what I'm talking about. I want to see it too. That sounds cool. Yeah, it's a really cool looking figure. Yeah, I think you, sh you were showing it to me at one point. And that, that was a thing I wasn't aware of because I guess it was a little more obscure thing out of Japan. But uh, Yeah, and I'm older uh, than we, you. At so. least... Uh, but yeah, yeah, before my time kind of yeah, thing. Exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. Obscure for my generation, but yeah, yeah beautiful uh, design for sure. I would, yeah, I mean, I grew up uh, with Voltron, obviously. That was yep. the, the one that was really in pop culture here. 
lots of Voltron, and there was like Go Dakin and Go Bots and some other ones similar, and some yeah. different variations right. on Voltron as well. Yeah. Yeah, there, well, even yeah, in Voltron. Go ahead, I think Corey. I had like two of the pieces of Voltron, I never had the whole thing, so that was kind of a bummer. I, I, assume, I assume you're speaking of the Lion one, because there's the lesser yeah, known yeah. Uh, vehicle one. Yep, that's what I meant. Is how there's I'm, normally I think yep. of the lion one, but there's yep. a few Voltrons and the yeah. vehicle one. Yeah, the original was the lions, and then there was the uh, the vehicle ones, which um, was much later on, and I don't think ever became as popular, at least in America. Uh, but the really cool thing about that one was uh, it was a lot of vehicles that connected to make one robot. Each one vehicle could not transform on its own. Uh, nor could the lions, they were just robot lions that combined, but um, because they were just vehicles and not articulated, they ended up making a really cool, very cheap toy that was just each vehicle made out of rubber with basically like the peg and the hole required for each vehicle needed to, to stick them together to make the robot. So it was just a really effective, very cheap toy that kind of, to me as a kid, when I was really young, I loved Legos, and when I was older, I loved Transformers. And this was the perfect balance, and it was designed in such a way, I mean, you know, it, it probably cost like $3 back then to get the entire Voltron combining uh, robot in this little uh, kit. That was very, right. very cool little toy. I think I, I might have that one. I definitely have a, a few variations on the Lion. I have like a large plastic one, and I've got like a 12-inch die-cast metal one, and nice. like an 8-inch die-cast metal one. And the uh, the 12-incher is pretty rare because they, it was recalled due to like lead inside the paint. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. And, uh, and my dad's like, we're not bringing that back. Like, we're that's sending you to college, boy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. It's like, we'll have a rare, you know, we'll have something rare. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, uh, but I was talking about the vehicle one specifically. Do you have some of the vehicle Voltrons as well? I do. Oh, okay. So yeah, this is, they're very, it's a set. It all comes in one like blister carded thing. And it's just all the little vehicles, very minimalistic, almost a rubbery plastic. And you just uh, like practically Lego stick all the vehicles together to make the robot. I think so the one I have is just like a pre-assembled one that is oh, okay. just, uh, I think it's the, it's the actual Voltron. I don't think I can break it down into the vehicle. Okay, yeah, so this is different. This you can actually easily take it apart to all the vehicles and stick it together and make the robot. If I recall, there's really no extra parts needed or anything, and it's, it's just the simplicity of it I just really love. I love the waterfall back there. Yeah, oh yeah, the, the, this, uh, all this pixel art is fantastic. And like the night, it's night now, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, they do a great job. They don't just mix it up with the different details per level. They really change the lighting and the color uh, and the texture. So, you know, you start outside a cave, go in the cave, and the uh, the whole color scheme and lighting changes drastically. Um, without, like, the one thing they could have done very easily, because this, you know, all this old hardware was based on separate palettes for sprites and backgrounds, they could have e easily faded to darken the character sprites when they go into the cave, but mm. they left them the same level of brightness. That would have been a really nice additional atmospheric mm. effect that would have uh, theoretically not hurt performance at all in the game. Like they wouldn't yeah, have gotten a frame cool. rate drop or anything. That would have been real cool. Although yeah. it is, it, it does make a nice contrast between your yeah. the, the character sprites and the background. The dark background, yeah. Yeah. So is this like a mini boss? Yep. Yeah, I think this guy constitutes an actual boss fight. Yeah. Oh, because he seems smaller in size yeah, than the other bosses. Yeah, don't pick on his small stature. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely tough. Yep. You got me. I like too how even though this was a cave level, like. You fight the boss outside of the cave. You come yep. out at the end. Yeah, uh, it's pretty neat. Yeah, I think I think we started outside the cave because uh, Bill remarked about the waterfall in the ba background. Yep. Right. And then uh, then you go into the cave and then back out, and now it's a wheat field, a la very uh, influenced by Kurosawa, right? Uh, the filmmaker. Um, but uh, Seven Samurai. Awesome stuff.
No. Did, did you uh, did you uh, hear about Kurosawa's obsession, even though it was black and white film? Uh, with I don't remember which of his movies that was, but he had this vision for this scene of uh, in the moonlight, uh, the main like the main character walking through a wheat field, and he really really wanted the wheat field to be golden. So eventually he had a, a team of people spray paint a real giant wheat field with metallic gold paint just so that the wheat would reflect the light properly, uh, according to his vision. He was that obsessed with the uh, visual storytelling aspect, like getting every bit of light and texture and movement exactly how he sees it. And I mean, you could see it in all of his movies, just absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, I know he used to use either, uh, I think it was black paint for rain, so you can actually see it. Because if you just wow. shoot clear, if you shoot one. water, yeah, if you shoot water, it's right. really hard to see it on black and white film. You have to, you know, backlight it, and even even then it's it's translucent. Right. So he used to use, um, he used to put like either some kind of black dye into the water to, um, to make it more visible. Awesome. That's crazy. Now we got some some sunset effect. I like it or sunrise. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's interesting with film in that way because you know we talk about how Nintendo kind of revitalized console gaming, you know, in America. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, back with the NES, and then you know, a lot of people don't, may, younger people don't always quite realize that it's like Kurosawa uh, inspired a lot of Hollywood more than they think, oh, yeah. you know, probably. So, um, yeah, you'd practically be hard pressed to find any Western movie maker that doesn't pretty much worship Kurosawa or was not yeah. highly influenced by him, even if indirectly. So very true. Even from a storytelling, storytelling standpoint, you know, how he was telling yeah. The same story from multiple perspectives, kind of like Quentin yep. Tarantino definitely drew on that. Oh yeah, was that uh, Rashomon? I think was yep, that the exactly. famous one. Yep. yep. Yeah. And, hey, uh, that staircase looks familiar. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But it <laughs> is uh, it is palette changed, but that is right. that is the same uh, same exact staircase. And uh, the other interesting um, or a an interesting other parallel you could draw between the influence of Japanese filmmaking and uh, and Western and the uh, is uh, two of the fa most famous actors of um, you know Kurosawa's fam favorite actor uh, Toshiro Mifune uh, he was discovered accidentally and so was the star of the spaghetti Westerns that ended up replacing Mifune in the Western versions of the samurai movies that they knocked off for the good, the bad, and the ugly, and the other one. Uh, it was a direct ripoff, almost scene for scene, of Yojimbo and Senjaro. Um, but uh, anyway, is this conversation too nerdy, everyone? We're getting into real film nerd stuff. <laughs> um, I love it. But yeah, yeah there's. Sorry now. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, man, Toshiro Mofune was such an amazing actor and. Uh, yeah, he was accidentally discovered, just like a, a twist of fate. He, he was he was like a delivery boy or something for a, 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 a disgruntled delivery boy having a hard time finding good work after uh, serving his nation in the war as, I think, a fighter pilot. And he was really um, disgruntled and uh, felt uh, sort of underappreciated by the Japanese government. And uh, he, took, he took to too much drinking and was just depressed and... So he had this like a menial job. Uh, I'm pretty sure like he was delivering something in an office building where Kurosawa happened to be auditioning <laughs> actors. He wow. walks in the wrong room. They think he's one of the actors audi auditioning, and they um, they give him a uh, a script and say, "Okay, read this." And he thought they were making fun of him. Uh, and then he looks at the script and it's like it's supposed to be written or, or maybe he just does it that way. But I, I'm pretty sure according to the story, it's supposed to be like an angry drunk person in the script. So, so he's thinking, I can do that. I've got I've got practice. <laughs> right. So so he just an angry drunk person. So yeah, so this non actor just uh, 
just reads the script and apparently Kurosawa loved him so much that not only did he hire him but he ended up changing a massive amount of the next movie uh, like he, he it was that character was originally going to be like a small part and he reworked the movie for that to be a major role in the movie and, wow. and then the, the rest is history he starred in almost every Kurosawa movie since then uh, and just became world renowned, and his uh, and he deserved it. His his presence, his charisma, and his range. He could go from extreme drama to uh, comedy uh, in one scene, just flaw like f so fluidly and flawlessly. Really amazing actor. Oh, that wasn't cool even. I was going to say that wasn't even really a boss, was it? It was just like a machine in our way, I guess. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was another it way like to one. another way to eat your quarters before you finish the game. Right. That's what it is. I guess you. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't sure where to hit it. I guess you hit it in that stomach area. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Usually in an arcade, boy, I die a lot. Usually in an arcade, um, arcade game, just. Attack until something blinks, then you know you did it right. <laughs> right. Speaking yeah. of actors, I found yeah. out right before I came on that Sean Connery died today. Yeah, I just spotted that too. That's uh, that's a shame. It's, yeah, it's terrible. Another so very cool. yeah, very recognized and charismatic uh, actor. He's the best James Bond. Definitely. I love him in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade as well. He's so good. Yeah, he was another one of those actors that, regardless of the role he was playing, you you always found something to like in the movie because he yeah, was in it, you know? Yeah, the charisma, yeah. yeah. I mean, it didn't matter. He was always Sean Connery. It's kind of like Jack right. Nicholson. <laughs> Jack Nicholson is always extremely Jack Nicholson, but right. that's not necessarily a bad thing. And when, when there's a role that he's right for, no one else can replace him. Not even Christian Slater. Sorry, Christian. <laughs> But yeah, Sean Connery, to me, another thing interesting about him is, to me, he got way cooler older. You yeah, know what I mean? Sure. Like his roles in older he aged movies. well. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Like, oh, again, going back to the, the baldness thing, he, to me, he looked cooler and uh, more charismatic and, uh, when he was old and bald. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. <laughs> It's true though. He yeah. and Michael Jordan, they 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 made bald great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy they did because it's so much easier. Yeah. To be bald. <laughs> yeah, not emotionally at first, but definitely technically or physically. It's <laughs> once you get used to it. It's yeah. Once you settle in. Yeah. Exactly. Whoa, he just stabbed me and lifted me up and over. That was crazy. I find that, you know, you don't, the, the pickups you get don't really heal, heal you that much. Yeah, that's true. Sorry. The final conflict. Oh, wow. Is that two life meters down there? Uh... Or just one long one, I guess. Yeah, I guess one really Interesting. long Interesting. Interesting way to handle that, you know? Yeah, we, we need to slaughter his horse, too. That's the other meaning. <laughs> All right. The horse is the actual criminal mastermind. <laughs> no one will ever... Slaughter the horse and then put it into a cheesesteak. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty grim, but there was what? a cheesesteak place and not too far away from me in Philly, and they got busted for using horse meat. It's pretty wow. grim. <laughs> that, that's like almost always, you know, there's so many urban legends about it, and it just happens to be true sometimes. <laughs> right. Like the, uh, there was one uh, back when I was a kid of McDonald's using kangaroo meat. Ooh, <laughs> like that's so, Australia. That's so specific, you know, kangaroo meat, yeah, really? Yeah, It's like you would think that would be more expensive <laughs> than cow, you know? I imagine right. it probably, it might have been in Australia, like, you know, because there, it's, like, yeah. it's kind of like the, the kangaroos there, like the deer are here yeah. in New York. Plus, it, uh, it's that. It's yep. that, uh, well, it was McDonald's, you were saying, right? It's, it's that yeah. McDonald's that's way out away from town, uh, and they, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you know, 
<laughs> that, that just happens to have a lot of uh, wildlife around. Yeah. Well, the horse theme is pretty good for today because I live, the town next to me is Sleepy Hollow, the real Sleepy oh, Hollow. Oh, nice. And uh, today's Halloween, you know, and normally we have, there's an actor who like rides around town with, on a horse dressed as the Headless nice. Horseman. And it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Unfortunately, this year, Halloween has been canceled essentially oh, because right. of, yeah, but it's, it's a bummer because here in uh, Sleepy Hollow, they, they do it right, man. It's, it's like the big holiday, obviously, that everyone waits for right. all year. And they do it really, really well. Does the actor go the whole nine yards and remove his head? <laughs> oh yeah, no, he looks life. exactly. He looks. He looks like he came right, right from the movie. Nice. All right, where this am guy I? just uh, wears his riches. Uh, you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah, he's practically got the full range of infinity stones on his hand there <laughs> as rings. He doesn't have a treasury, he's just got it on. Oh, final stage clear. Did we do it? Did we make it all the way through? I believe so. Just in time, too. So That was well, perfect timing. All right, well, excellent. We'll yeah. let the... Uh, um, just turn off your ca your camera, Bill, and change into your Halloween costume. Yeah, exactly. If, if you need to, <laughs> while we wrap up the chat, well... Yeah, it's a, a fantastic um, uh, sort of um, light romp, but a, but a quarter eater for sure. It's a lot of fun in uh, multiplayer. And there is that added sophistication if you do get good at blocking and then counterattacking. And in fact, this is the game that inspired that aspect of Metro Siege where you can block and then it'll automatically do a counterattack move if you successfully block. Uh, mm. So, so that's where I got it from. I just made it a little, um, a little easier to uh, to pull off than it is in this game. But uh, anyway, that was, yep. That was great, guys. Thank you so much. That was a lot of fun, and this game yeah. is super cool. I love the artwork. It really sucks you in, and it's a, a challenging game. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely made to be a token eater. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure. Look for people who play this game well out on the on the line. I'm sure there's people that manage to do it without dying. Uh, constantly like I did um, but anyway uh, we will awesome, end guys. it there and let uh, let Bill uh, do what he needs to do for Halloween uh, thanks for joining us Bill and thanks everyone for watching thanks for having me, that was great if you enjoy our content and want to keep up to date on our games please leave a like and subscribe also if you want to support our projects consider becoming a patron the link's in the description and we'll see you soon